Hello? Is that a video game? I don't know what it is. Hello? We must pass the 28th amendment. Are you a Republican? Are you a Republican? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Trump in Hawaii. I'm thinking he's a Republican. Period. Me too. If you show him something in the store, please. Oh, Biden? I see Biden's face. Ugh. Yes or no? Just can give just, me a yes or can no. Can we just see what you look like? Can we just see if you're cute or not? <laughs> oh. I don't fuck. Dude. Where's everybody from? Where are you guys watching from right now? I'll explain the poster and you tell me where you're from. Take your finger for me and tap on my finger. Tap on my finger, see my finger tapping? I'll explain to you what the graphic is if you tap on my finger right there. Tap on my finger right there, see where my finger is? Just tap on my finger so we can get 20,000, 30,000 likes. And I'll tell you guys what the graphic means. I'll give you the exact details of the graphic. Just tap right there, it's easy, it's free. It took me 20 years to design this poster. If you just tap right there for me, I really appreciate that. Thank you. So if you guys take a look up here, this is the United States of America. And our system is based on three systems of governance. The executive, the congressional, and the judicial branches of government. We elect the executive, we elect the congressional, and we do not elect the Supreme Court of the United States of America. The Supreme Court has one job and one job only, and their job is to uphold our Bill of Rights. That's why we have a court we call Supreme. That's why there's a Supremacy Clause. The Supreme Court is supposed to uphold all 10 of our Second Amendment, First Amendment, Third Amendment, Fourth Amendment, all of our rights. And if you go down the graphic, if you take a look at the top of the chart right there, very top of the chart, you see where it says Marshall Court. Right along that right there is all the Supreme Courts we've had. Every single Supreme Court we've had in the history of America is right along the top. You see it, right? Ending at, where is it going to end at? The John Roberts Court. There it is right there. You see it? That's where we end. Now, the, the cases that you see here, all of these cases, Brown versus Board of Education, Shelley versus Kramer, U.S. versus Caroline Products, 
Corrigan versus Buckley, Hendricks versus Maryland, Lone Wolf versus Hitchcock, all these cases, these cases are the cases that formed our rights today. Because when we started America, we started America based on the foundation of these gentlemen here. These gentlemen here. At the very top of the screen here, forgive me, at the very top of the screen here, this gentleman's named John Locke. His name right here, this guy right here who you're looking at, his name is John Locke. He wrote the theory of natural law. That's what our 10 amendments are based on and that's what I kind of listed here. This is the theory of natural law here. The 10 amendments are based on his theories and these are the theories of the natural law. That we have our liberty, we have freedom of religion, freedom of press, we have it all. Second amendment, due process, private property. These gentlemen down here on the bottom, obviously you're gonna recognize James Madison, but you may not recognize this gentleman here. His name is Jean-Jacques Rousseau. He wrote the idea of checks and balances with Charles Montesquieu, this gentleman here. And that's what our system is supposed to be based on, checks and balances. It's not though. And then as you go down the history of the timeline here, all of these people here, these are figureheads that had major, major impact in the United States of America. These people contributed to creating an America. This is not the history that you will learn in high school. This is not the history that you will learn. This is the unedited and unredacted version of history. I've taken 20 years to put my brain on a wall and now everything I've ever known about history and about how our country works. For example, let me give you a simple history lesson here very, very quickly. Everything is based on Carroll versus the United States. Right there, that case right there. 1925 case that creates exigent circumstances. What are exigent circumstances? That your rights can be superseded. The ones I just showed you, the most important ones, the right to life, the right to liberty, the right to assemble. They were all lost in Carroll. The results of Carroll versus the United States is the industrial prison complex that we live in today, where we are 5% of the world's population and we hold 20% of the world's prisoners. We have a dungeon cage system here that is not working. And if you see the presidents lined up along the caging system there, do you see all those presidents? It starts down here. Here, let's take a look at where it first takes off. Where does it take off? Right there. And look straight above it. Look straight, see the first jump right there where we quadruple the prison industry right there? You can see it, there it is. There it is, we quadruple it. We go from under 40,000 to over 200,000 in just 13 years. And who's to blame for that? Herbert Hoover and Woodrow Wilson because we started prohibition. And so then as we move forward down the timeline, who else? Now the prison system's flying. What happened? What happened? What happened? Now take a look up there at Terry versus Ohio. See where Terry versus Ohio is up there? You see that up there, right up there in the middle of the screen, right below Earl Warren's head? There's Terry versus Ohio. Now watch the prison system after Terry. Look at that. Let me adjust the camera for you guys. Look at that. Look at that. How incredible. How incredible. Look at that. Is that amazing? Look at all those people living in a dungeon. We go from 300,000 down here, Terry v. Ohio passes. We're over 2 million, 2.4, 2.5 million people in dungeons. These are human lives we're talking about. So what happened? What went wrong? What was it? What was it? Tell me what it was. It was Terry versus Ohio. Terry versus Ohio is only made possible from Kerr versus California. Without Kerr versus California, there can be no Terry versus Ohio. Without Carroll versus the United States in 1925, there can be no Kerr. Do you see how our system works? It's called jurisprudence or stare decisis. They base cases off of previous cases. What do you think these cases back here were about? Check the timeline. Why do you think the laws back here were created? Why were laws back here created? Why do you think these laws back here were created? And how come I have a lynching chart? So this is the beginning of the lynchings here in 1868, where we have a thousand lynchings. And then in 1873, we're gonna have 200 lynchings. And then the lynching chart begins where we start to keep track of how many people are being lynched. 
Why do you think that exists? How come there's a lynching chart? Anybody just type it down there for me. Type it down there for me. Why do we have a lynching chart? There's a thousand people here. Tap on your screen and tell me right there. How come there's a lynching chart on this wall right here? Why is there a lynching chart? Why is there a chart of lynchings? Because the Supreme Court, because the unelected body of Supreme Court. There's a lynching chart in America, not because of white supremacy and because of racism solamente, because we have an unelected body of nine people who don't answer to anybody. They're the kings of our country. If we don't elect the Supreme Court, your children are doomed. Your children are doomed. We did not elect senators in Congress until the 17th Amendment, right there, in the year 1913. So how come we elected senators with the 17th Amendment in the year 1913? We passed an amendment of the Constitution where two-thirds of the states ratified it in the year 1913. Can you imagine how much organization it took to get two-thirds of the state to agree to a congressional amendment to Congress? Why would they do that? Because things were going like shit in America. Things were going like dog shit here, my friends. So we elect senators. What else happens here? Women get the right to vote in 1920. Holy smokes. Big changes are going on. Prohibition starts in 1920. Big changes. Big changes. What year is it now, my friends? What year is it now? 2021. History always repeats itself. Guess what we're in for right now, people? If you don't know, I'm just showing you 20 years of my brain. We're in for big, big problems in the next decade. Fasten your seatbelts. Get ready. You're going to witness history in a way you didn't even want to. What we're about to experience is an authoritarian state like you can't imagine. Let's talk about that word mandate. In 1920, there was a mandate that people would stop drinking alcohol. The World Health, the, the, the FDA, right here, banned alcohol. The startup of right here, of this gentleman right here, J. Edgar Hoover, what this guy does is he starts poisoning alcohol barrels. He does. He starts poisoning alcohol bottles. He's founded in 1924, and the reason why is because the Wickersham Commission says that police will not enforce the law. They are the dr alcohol runners. Police are the alcohol runners. That's the reason why the FBI started in 1924, because of prohibition. And when J. Edgar Hoover cannot get his hand on the alcohol business, he begins to poison the alcohol. Why? Ask yourself that why. Why would a guy who's the Federal Bureau of Investigations poison alcohol? Well, like I just said, I said here 1920 and I showed you this future coming up is going to be horrific. With all these people in a dungeon and the police state and government mandates, we're in big trouble in 2021, next 20 years. Now, let's go back 100 years. What did I say? Prohibition started right here. Let's go back 100 years. We're back here in 1920. What's going on in 1920? the beginning of the Temperance Society. What's the Temperance Society? The Temperance Society is a group of elitists. Sound familiar? A group of elitists, a group of elitists of unelected billionaires and trillionaires. And so in 1820, they start a movement called the Temperance Society. From 1820 all the way up until 1920, they are pushing, pushing, pushing for what? To criminalize alcohol. So when a mandate is established in 1920, there's the results. We go from 40,000 people in prison to over 200,000 people in prison in just a decade. Because when you put a mandate on America, then what happens is free Americans are gonna buck that. And how does that happen? What, who else is gonna buck it? The police. Does it sound like familiar? Does any of this sound familiar? The police are the biggest alcohol runners in the game. There's no bigger than them. You've heard of Al Capone. You haven't heard of this because you've never read the Wickersham Commission. And before tonight, likely you never heard of it because it was, it, was, it was literally squashed like a bug. You think I'm kidding, I'm not. It was squashed like a bug. You've never heard of this, have you? Welcome to reality. So what's going on here? A government mandate is passed. Who bucks the trend? The police. Is a government mandate gonna be passed here? Is it gonna be the bloodiest time in US history just like prohibition was? So do you guys know the bloodiest time in history, right? Right now we're living in a dungeon time where we lock up. By the way, if you're a part of this dungeon system, in just one generation or two, your children will not admit that you were a part of their lives. If you participated to dungeoning people, what we're doing in America is gonna go down. Mm, kinda tough to beat Hitler. Kinda tough to beat Hitler, of course. However, 
ruining millions of lives, over arresting us for chemicals over and over and over, and specifically targeting people of color. And by the way, please, the laws up here, all these laws up here, all the laws in the United States of America, bar very few, were developed against black people. I wish that wasn't true. I'm sorry to tell you guys the truth because I'm white and my family's been here since the beginning of the Revolutionary War when we broke away from England. But I can go down the line and I can show you each, oh, I can just show you. So now let me, if you've been here since the beginning, type it right there, I've been here since the beginning. Type it right here, type it right here, I've been here since the beginning because now everything I just told you, I'm gonna to put together for you in the most beautiful way. You're gonna truly understand everything I just said. Type it right down here. I've been here since the beginning. Type it right there for me, pretty please. And then tap that screen for me, guys. You ready? Now, here we go. You ready for this? Now, what have I said so far? I've talked about elitists. Talked about control. Talked about our rights. I've told you, I've showed you different time periods of history, how things began. 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 So now, let me take you, put it all together. When you have an unelected group of nine people who are in charge of our civil liberties... Remember, their only functionality, their only functionality is to defend our Bill of Rights, the basic natural rights of life, right to life, right to press, right to speech, right to live, right to self-defense. If you don't have a gun, you don't have any self-defense. You think you're secure in your house right now? You're not. Nobody's going to come save you. The only right you have is to self-protection. Now, let me show you something. 1776, the, the Constitution is established here. 1776, right there. How long does it take before this unelected body of white, of white Supreme Court supremacy, it's just disgusting to say it, but it's true. 1776, how long before they destroy the natural rights of man, of all people, of all human beings, how long before they destroy the natural rights? It's 75 years, from 1776 until 1857. So that's what, 780 years? That's when Dred Scott passes, Dred Scott. This is when the Supreme Court, who goes to Harvard, Yale, Oxford, all those, they say that Dred Scott's not a man, he's property. Yeah, they say that Dred Scott is not a man, he's property. Okay, so it takes, 70, it takes 80 years before we have our unelected people ruin our country, and it causes what? What happens right there? As soon as the Dred Scott hearing happens, as soon as Dred Scott happens in 1857, right here, John Brown starts a civil war, he says, the golden rule of our country is that all men are created equal. He attacks Harper's Ferry where General Lee is. This guy does. He invites Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass says, dude, you're going to die. Frederick Douglass will read his obituary. He'll stand there at the river and read his obituary. He will read out loud his eulogy, what, what he lived, what his life was. He said, when John Brown invited me to attack Harper's Ferry, I told him it was a journey he would not come back from. And I was correct. These guys were best friends. So when the supreme tyranny, these guys of unelected people up here, when they say that, 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 that Dred Scott's not a man, he's property, John Brown says, oh yeah, I'll fight for that. And he does. In 1961 to 1965, a million people in America die. Over what? The unelected Supreme Court passing a law that we don't all agree to. No, most people said, no, black people are the same as we are. Stop it. It never stopped. So then up here, this unelected body. So now what happens? The elected body of Congress, right here, this elected body, they pass the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. And what does that do? That gives us civil liberties, that gives us civil rights. We elected these people. The executive, Andrew Johnson, he does not sign the bill. Congress, two-thirds two of a vote, overrides Andrew Johnson. And so Congress passes the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment without the help of the executive because the power of America resides in the people. That's how Congress overrides the executive. However, here's what happens next. This unelected body of, of personnel who we don't elect, after we pass the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, with the, with the 1873 Slaughterhouse ruling holding, with the 1876 Cruikshank holding, and with 1876 Reese versus the United States, the Supreme Court effectively and totally, in every single regard, wipes out the rest these three amendments and the supreme court wipes out all of your amendments because right here when they do that when they pass Cruikshank, 
They say that the federal government cannot ensure your civil liberties. Let me introduce you to the lynching chart. The Supreme Court caused it. They're the reason for it. There was racism, there was all these things, but there was not this lynching chart. The lynching chart began because of Cruikshank versus the United States. Understand? So when Cruikshank versus the United States is passed, the Supreme Court holds they cannot defend your civil liberties against racists. And how do I know I'm saying that exactly? How do I know that that's the truth? Because in the 15th Amendment is passed in the year 1870 here. See 1870 right there. In 1870, when the 15th Amendment is passed, there's another act passed with it called the 1870 Enforcement Act. There's two enforcement acts. The acts specifically read that the KKK cannot suppress the black vote by hanging them. That's what the act says. That's what the 1870 Enforcement Act actually reads. It's a addition to the 15th Amendment so that black people can't be lynched by the KKK to suppress the voting right. And by the way, that's where the term Jim Crow comes in. The white actor who painted his face with black face and then he painted his hands black and acted like a feeble-minded slave. And so when the 15th Amendment was going to be passed, let me find a piece of shit white person here. Hugo Black, member of the KKK. P white people who were racist like this jackass said that black people were the same as the Jim Crow Act. That they were feeble-minded, couldn't walk, couldn't talk, were idiots. That's what they said. And so when the 15th Amendment came, they said you can't let Jim Crow vote in our elections. Just a little side plot for you there. His name was Dartmouth Rice. He was an actor. He did the act from 1830 to 1861. So now as we move forward down the timeline, the lynching chart has developed when the Supreme Court declares in a public statement that we cannot defend your rights from racists. That's what happens from Cruikshank. Cruikshank is based off the 1873 Colfax Massacre, where they violated the 1870 Enforcement Act and they massacred 150 black people. And so then in Cruikshank, they said they're not guilty. So then we have this lynching chart here, but the lynching chart for the white people, you see the white lynchings here? Check out the longest line. You guys see the longest line? See the longest line? I won't keep you in suspense. That's when 160 white people were lynched in the year 1884. Right there, 1884. That's when 160 white people were lynched in 1884. And how come they were lynched in 1884, 160 white folks? Because in the 1883 case of Pace versus Alabama, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, the people who we don't elect, the unelected body of white supremacy, they said that you couldn't marry or be with a black person or, white, or an Asian person or a Mexican person. That's a law, that was a law. It was a law. That was a law all the way until 1967 in Loving versus Virginia when that passed. This was overruled. So how long did that last from 1883 until 1967? That's a long time, my friends. That's a long time. And what would happen to you if you did hang out with a black person or a Mexican person or an Asian person or someone that you loved? What would happen to you? What would happen to you? This was a message to white America right here through these years, that you will not support black people. You will not make love with them. You will not cohabitate with them. You will not live with them. You will not support them. And if we see you and your children having anything to do with black people, you will be lynched. This is how white supremacy ruled, through lynchings. And the lynchings were only made possible by the unelected Supreme Court. So this goes on for how long and things are going like absolute dog shit. Am I long? So the lynchings are going on and they're kind of going down a little bit, but not really, not that much. And then prohibition happens and we, so just so you know, just so you guys know, just, just keep things in perspective here. The 13th Amendment that has slavery and the Freedom Amendment right here, right? But black people really didn't go to jail. You see this down here? This is the prison population chart down here. Just go all the way back here. Take a look. It says prison population right there. And then the first one is zero, and the next one's 100,000 human beings. Well, then if you go down here, right, there's, there's no, no prison population. Now, right here, the South builds prisons. North Carolina builds prisons. South Carolina, all, you know, all the southern states build prisons here. But they do not pack them full of black people. Matter of fact, the prison industry is mostly white people. There's no industry of prison. People go to jail for a little while, but there's no real... People who are like uh, mentally ill that kill people and stuff like that, they go to prison. And we've always had the criminally insane. You're going to have criminally insane people who have to live in a box. I get that. 
But for the most part, though, most people are not criminally insane and you can let them back out. So we don't let them in. But then the black folks, either you go back to the plantation or you meet the rope. Because now take a look at the black lynchings. Do you see the black lynchings and the dark blue lines? So you can see where the black lynchings clearly supersede the white lynchings through here. Right? And so as you go forward here, now things are going like shit. Now Plessy versus Ferguson creates legal segregation. And then there's a bunch of Supreme Court cases here that completely back up segregation. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt cuts black people out of the economic prosperity with Corgan versus, you know, I can go on and on. But I want to show you something here. As we move forward in time, as we move forward here, and we take a look here in this area right here, you're going to see this man right here, John F. Kennedy. And of course, you recognize Malcolm, and you recognize MLK Jr., and you recognize some of these people in here, Medgar Evers, and different folks. But what you don't recognize, because you can't see it, no, someone has to point it out and tell you, is that the 1964 Civil Rights Act, this one right here, 1964, 1965, 1865, 1866, 1868, 1870, 13th, 14th, 15th, 100 years previous. That's called conceptual analysis. So now you understand history repeats itself. 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment are almost identical to the 1964 Civil Rights Act, the 1965 Civil Rights Act, and the 1968 Civil Rights Act. They're almost identical because it didn't work. It just didn't work the first time. It didn't work. And so then right here, what happens here? Now check out this similarity. Right here, we got the 15th Amendment in 1870 that's gonna be the final token to try to create a civil rights, an equal society. But then in 1876, six years later, the Supreme Court wipes away all of your rights with Cruikshank. Now let me show you something really eerie here. 100 years later, this one took six years, right? Six years from here to here come up here the 1965 civil rights act happens here and that's the and then you got the housing act of 1968 but then terry v ohio happens in 1968 and as you can see terry v ohio is the linchpin of the prison system and the death system because after terry versus ohio not only is this going to create the modern day prison system it's going to put officer safety as more important than your rights so that means your initial interaction with the police officer the most important primary thing is his safety that's why we're seeing so many people get murdered and beat up on camera. It's legal because the officer's safety is more important than all of your rights. And that's what Earl Warren did. That's what he did. That's literally what he did. So then all the laws after that are going to be death laws. They're going to be murder laws where they can kill you legally on camera. That's what you're seeing today. You're seeing today the results of Terry versus Ohio. So Pennsylvania versus Mims, when we put officer safety over the top of your rights, if you're driving in a car, uh, Harry Mims, a black man, was forced to get out of the car. And when it went to the Supreme Court, then they said that, yeah, everybody has to get out of the car in the name of officer safety. So who's it safe for when you get out of that car? Is it safe for you or the officer? And then as you move forward, all these other laws here, Illinois versus Gates, Cortez versus, you know, now these two laws are also death laws, straight death laws that are extensions of Terry. Tennessee versus Garner says cops cannot shoot you in the back of the head unless it's in the name of officer safety. I'm not kidding. That's the actual holding. I'm not making things up here. And then Wilson versus Arkansas, Breonna Taylor, says that you cannot no-knock raid someone's house unless, of course, you do it in the name of officer safety. So these are death laws. These are death laws. That's what these are. These are death laws. And no one's ever told you this. And the reason why they've never told you this is because they don't want you to know. So then um, you guys are familiar with Sandra Bland, right? Everybody heard of Sandra Bland? You ever heard of her? She was pulled over on a REN stop. A REN stop is where they can pull your car over for any tiny infraction or they can just make up an excuse to pull you over because they're checking out to make sure that you're not a drug runner or you're not drunk or they're just suspicious of your vehicle. I'm not kidding. It's called building reasonable articulable suspicion. And REN versus the United States is of course an extension of Terry versus Ohio. So once they pulled over Sandra Bland on a REN stop, well then of course, Pennsylvania versus Mims says you gotta get out of the car. And then Graham versus Connor says that I can use any amount of force on you that I think is appropriate. And so there's Sandra Bland, there's her life. Her life is a confection of four different laws, five different laws. Terry is Sandra's life. 
and then that extended over here to Wren versus United States, Sandra's life. And then that came back over here to Pennsylvania versus Mims, and that's Sandra's life. And then we popped over here to Graham versus Connor, and that belongs to Sandra's life as well. So you put the blame exactly where it belongs, on the Supreme Court, on the Supreme Court. So if you're stuck in a duopoly where you're pushing Democrat or Republican, I literally think you're lost. Just so you know, I think you're lost. I feel bad for you because you don't know it's the Supreme Court. I don't mind sitting here teaching you and educating you. But if you're still talking about Biden or Trump and fighting about those two guys, let me just let me just clue you guys in real quick. So right here, right here, this guy right here, Joe Biden, who I don't like him and I don't like Trump and I don't report, I don't like Republicans and I don't like Democrats. After the 1994 Mullen Commission comes out in 1994 that says police are absolutely tyrannical garbage and that they, they, they literally have a blue wall of silence and that they're roughing people up and killing people and they're a part of every major alcohol, drug, prostitution ring, gambling ring, police are a part of them, all of them. They're running them. They're the leaders of them in July of 1994. And then in, we got the 1994 crime bill comes out when? October. October of 94. What does the 94 crime bill do? It funds police to the teeth. You guys have the saying defund police. It's a joke. It's a joke. The cops program has in it with the Judge Advocate General Fund that funds police to $25 billion over the past, since 1994. All the cops have to do is apply for money to the federal government and Joe Biden will give it. So when you take a look at this prison chart right here, Ronald Reagan's responsible for this first gigantic for-profit prisons. And then this one right here, this gigantic straight up like you're going to go off a fucking slope. That's Joe Biden and Bill Clinton. And then Obama, he sat right over that. And when the, when the Harvard professor had a, when, when the Harvard professor, you guys remember the Harvard professor where the cops came into his house and there was pictures on his wall and the Harvard professor was in there and Obama had beer gate. Do you remember that? How come Obama, who went to law school and wrote the Harvard Review, why didn't he say, oh my God, this man was Terry stopped in his own house. And the policies of Terry are that we can detain you. That's why they put that Harvard professor in handcuffs and put him on his belly like he was a seal. And what did Obama do? He fraud. He had beer gate. <laughs> he had a beer with the cop and the professor. How'd it go, guys? How'd it go? Yeah, thanks, Obama. Thanks, Obama. Thanks, Trump. Thanks, Reagan. Thanks, Nixon. Just come on. It's all of them. So listen, if you guys go by my website, deletelaws.com, you can get a copy of this exact wall graphic. I have it on. And if you don't have any cash, I'll give it to you absolutely for free. If you contact me and give me your email address, go to my website. I'll give it to you for free. You don't have to have any money. I'll give it to you anyway. I do appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to my lecture. This is my, my, co my cup of coffee fund right there. You guys see it? Cup of coffee. I'm hitting the road. I'm heading to Missouri. I'm going to go help a woman named Tina Slay fight for her son named Caleb. The website is Justice for Caleb. This is my cup of coffee fund. If you guys learned anything today, feel free to buy me a cup of coffee, but do not break yourself. We live in a bullshit capitalistic system that has fucked us all. Don't hesitate. I appreciate your support. Cup of coffee fund. That's all I'm looking for. Nothing more. Take it easy. I appreciate it. A thousand people buy a cup of coffee. I can drive to Missouri, which by the way, you guys can follow my trip. I'm going to Missouri. I'm going to Missouri. I'm heading. Thank you for the support to call. And I just thank you guys for the support. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I am heading to Missouri. Uh, Justice for Caleb. You guys, my friend Tina Slay is in here. Her name is Justice for Caleb. Her son was murdered. Justice for Caleb, can you type a comment down there, please? Justice for Caleb is in this room. She needs a thousand followers to go live. Believe me, they don't want to hear her talk. Her name is Justice, the number four, and Caleb, and she is in the comment section right now. If all of you will please follow Justice, the number four, and then C-A-L-E-B, please follow my friend, justice for Caleb. She is a mother whose son was murdered within 15 seconds of a Terry stop. I'm taking my happy ass to Missouri and I'm going to take on the police state. I'm going to Missouri to help Tina slay justice for Caleb to get justice for her son. That's what I'm doing. That's why I made this poster. Anybody who can support me, thank you. If not, I'll give you this for free. You go to my website, deletelaws.com. You go to contact us. Go to contact us. Put your information in. Push enter. You get all my downloads for free. When you go to deletelaws.com, when you go to the contact us, the very last page, of, there's only four web pages. You put in your information if you're on a desktop or a computer or a laptop. And you put, here's my information. You push enter. You get the police commissions. 
you automatically get the police commissions, you get the NAP commission, you get the LaGuardia report. It's all free. It's all free, baby. It's all free. It doesn't cost you a dime. Not a single penny. It's on my website for nothing. For those of you who can support me, please go to the shop section and get a poster or get an ebook. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your support. Justice for Caleb. It's right there, you guys. Follow my friend Tina Slay. That's her son. Justice for Caleb. I need a... Th there she is. There she is, Tina. Tina, did you, did you chime in yet? Tina, let me add... Tina, you should request me. I wanna, oh, she can't. So she can't go live, you guys. Tina, for, I, can't, I can't add her live. I want to add her live right now, and I can't. You guys got to follow her. Pretty please. Justice for Caleb. She's right there. You see her? Right under my fingertip. Justice for Caleb. Please follow her. Leave the live for one second and come right back. I'll be right here. Justice for Caleb. Do you guys see her? She's in the comment section. Please follow her. She needs a thousand followers. Please. They don't want to hear what she has to say. She's a grieving mother. Her son was killed within 15 seconds of a Terry stop. Within 15... Her son, Caleb, had no interaction with the people they were looking for. They didn't have each other's cell phone numbers. They weren't connected on social media. Some random guy pulled up in front of Caleb's house. And within 15 seconds of the cop opening an investigation, he shot Caleb Slay in the back of the head twice. Please follow my friend Justice for Caleb. Please follow my friend Justice for Caleb. That's why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this right now. For people like Tina Slay who can't get justice. Who can't get justice for her kid. No one will look at her case. None of the, none of, she lives in a total police state. Wolf punch in the house, baby. That's my dog. That's my dog right there. So Terry v. Ohio spawns an entire ecosystem of death. And the way, the way that Terry v. Ohio spawns an ecosystem of death is that every step along the way of your Fourth Amendment, of your right to be free in your person, houses, papers, and effects, every single bit of your rights are gone when Terry's enacted. As soon as Terry v. Ohio is enacted, Pennsylvania versus MIM says you gotta get out of the car in the name of officer safety. And then Cortez versus the United States expands Terry v. Ohio. This changes probable cause to reasonable suspicion. And then Cortez changes that even further by saying that all you have to do is be, be suspicious of the circumstances, not even the actual person, just the circumstances alone. That's an extension of Terry. And then you guys know about Tennessee and you know about Wilson where these are death laws. So every step of the way, you can't be secure in your car. You can't be secure in your house. You can't run away and be safe. You can't even drive down the road. Michigan State Police versus SITS is what allowed DUI checkpoints right here, the 1990 case. Yes, it is an extension of Terry versus Ohio. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And so... We just keep going down the road and you get into some really heavy stuff. And then Wren versus United States is another extension of Terry that allows them just to pull over your car because they're suspicious of your car. And then we get even further in Arizona versus Johnson. And this is another extension of Terry in 2009. From 1968 to 2009 is 40 years. 40 years later, they're still using Terry. And this is if you're the passenger in a car. If you were the passenger in a car, do you have to get out of the car in the name of officer safety? Yes, you do. You have to get out of the car in the name of officer safety. So that's that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what you're looking at, guys. So head on by my website. If you're gonna buy one, great. If you're gonna get one, get one. They're free. If you need it for free, it's yours. If you wanna buy it, thanks for the support. If you don't, it's fine, it's free. What more can I do for you? And then tomorrow, tomorrow we're gonna go over the standard oil debacle. We're going to go over how Standard Oil, right here, tomorrow I'm going to go over what Standard Oil did and uh, J.D. Rockefeller, this man right down here. Tomorrow I'm going to go over uh, J.D. Rockefeller and uh, Andrew Carnegie and I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over in great detail how uh, th this, this, these, these six men right here truly ruined the United States of America for the rest of us. Right here, these people here. And now listen, I need you guys to go to my last video and I need you to swarm it. I need likes and followers. You have to you have to watch the video all the way to the end. I gave you guys a lesson. I gave you everything I could. I gave you everything I could for one night. I need you to go to my last video and drop a comment and watch it all the way from beginning to end. I need your help. Go to my last video. Not the pinned ones, the one before that. Watch the last video from beginning to end. Watch the last video I produced from beginning to end. Help me build my, my network here. Help me build my network. 
Delete Laws is also my YouTube page. I gotta go to work here. I gotta keep working. So I want you guys to go to my YouTube page and I want you to go to my last video here on TikTok. Watch it all the way to the end. Watch the whole thing. Watch the whole thing. Help me out. Help me out. You learned a lot tonight, didn't you? Did you learn a lot? Did I teach you a lot of stuff? Did I teach you a lot of stuff? Did you guys learn a lot of stuff? If, 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 if you learn a lot of stuff, just tap on your screen right here. Just tap on your screen and then go to my last video and uh, watch it to the end. Drop some comments on there. Help me build my network to teach people that every time you see someone get attacked by the police, every time you see someone get beat up or murdered by the police, understand that it's a law that the police officer did not break the law. The laws were created for the police officers to be able to kill us. The laws were created for the police officers to be able to take us to a dungeon. That's why the laws were created. We never will win as long as these laws exist. And to wipe out half of these laws, you wipe out Terry. Once you strip away Terry, everything else changes. Everything else changes. I do need your support. So thank you so much. I do appreciate it. You guys can go by my website. Pick up a copy of this wall graphic if you can. If not, go to the free section. You get it for free. All right. This is what I do all time, bro. I will never stop. A lot of people here, let me, let me give you an example. How many people, it's your first time here? Put your first time down here. How many people, it's your first time? Is it your first time here? Just type it right down here. Is it your first time here? If it's your first time here or your second time, how many times have you been here? How many times have you been here? Oh, I would, I, I would, and, and remember guys, try to be respectful because I have moderators in here and they will block you so fast. You just have to be, oh, pff, I just said that. You gotta, gotta be respectful. The moderators will block you so fast. You gotta be careful what you say. You really gotta be respectful. I have a team of moderators who have 10 times, six times, regular, regular, first time, 10 times. Oh, I can't read them all, they're too fast. First time, first time, four or five times, six times, third time, first time. So there's as many people who have been here. First, 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 first. Incredible, seventh time. First time, first time, a lot of first timers, regular. Wolf punch eight times. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate you guys, I really do. Really appreciate. I literally have a team of moderators. Yes, I have a team of moderators. Not just moderators, I have a team of moderators who work together in conjunction, who are friends that communicate with each other. I have an entire team of moderators who have slowly programming all their numbers in. So moderators, my moderators, if you haven't sent me your, your contact information yet, I need to get your contact information. I'm hitting the road to Missouri. I'm hitting the road to Missouri. So I need you guys' contact information. All the moderators should be sending me a DM with your contact information. I need all your contact information. I do appreciate your support. I do appreciate your support. I do appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Yep. You, thank you guys so much. I appreciate your support, really. It's an overwhelming thing to, uh, to ride the lightning with people because, uh, as you guys know, I have jumped straight into the fire and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going for it, man. We have to overturn Terry. That's what has to happen. That's what has to happen. All right, guys. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. I hope you guys learned a lot of stuff. I'm very grateful for everybody coming. Um, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, remember, you can get my stuff for free on my website just by going to contact us on your laptop or your desktop, putting your information in and the downloads will pop up. Um, if you guys do want to get a wall graphic or an ebook, that's on my shop section and I do appreciate it. Uh, you actually are building value for others by making it possible for me to give away so many of these things because most of America doesn't have any money because of the bullshit capitalistic system created by John D. Rockefeller and Standard Oil. So I gotta get out of here. I hate to leave 500 people hanging. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. All you guys who threw down some roses. I, I know I didn't call out anybody's name. I typically like to call out a name or two, but I'm so grateful for your support. I appreciate it so much. And I'm going to be on the road to Missouri, so please follow my venture. I'm going down there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go stay with Tina Slay, and I'm going to fight for Caleb. I'm going to fight for justice for Caleb. It's going to happen this week. I leave. I leave in the next two days as soon as I get my truck finalized. 
I'm out. I'm out. Thank you for your support. I appreciate that. Thank you. Much love. Much love to all you guys. I hope you learned a lot tonight. If you have any questions or anything you want to go over, don't hesitate to hit me up. I answer all direct messages. I look at every DM. Please don't send me any videos other than Terry. Please don't send me any videos other than Terry videos. Please, pretty please. 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 <laughs> all right. I got to get out of here, you guys. You guys take care, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.